Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and thanks for watching. So over the past week or so I've had a couple of requests to do a video on Xubuntu or Xbuntu. And um, so I last night I got the ISO downloaded. This is 1610 Yakety Yak. And uh, so, you know, I thought I knew it was getting close to release time, but I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> so this morning I was kind of digging around looking at, uh, you know, some of my Linux news. And lo and behold, uh, 1610 Yakety Yak is releasing tomorrow. So I debated on whether to wait for the official release, but I decided to go ahead with the video. I mean, yes, some things could change in the next 24 hours, but I think the overall UI and list of applications will probably stay intact for the release in less than 24 hours. So I decided I would go ahead and release the video and share all of this with you. Now, for those of you not familiar, the Xubuntu or Xubuntu, uh, spin of Ubuntu uses the XFCE desktop and I'm a big fan of XFCE the more I use it the more I like it kind of thing and I think it's certainly a better alternative than Unity I'm just not a fan of Ubuntu's default Unity desktop I know it's getting better I know there's some cool things on the horizon but you know it's just not for me so if that's the case for you and you're looking for an alternative but you still want an Ubuntu base I'm going to recommend to you this spin, which is a, again Xubuntu with the XFCE desktop, as well as Ubuntu Mate. To me, those two would make sense for a first time user, and there's several reasons why. Uh, first of all, the XFCE desktop is very light. It's light in use, and it's also light on system resources, but it's got a nice combination similar to Mate in that you still have plenty of configuration and settings control so that you can go in and make this desktop environment your own. And uh, you know, it's got several things, features that you do not see always on other desktop uh, desktop uh, Linux based OS's. So for example, in your right click menu, you have an application list. Now that is to me, it just makes sense. So, you know, if I'm working down here in a window or multiple monitors or something, I can right click here and quickly access my list of applications. And you see how fast everything launches. It's extremely fast. Um, the other thing I was happy to see is the whisker menu and oops I've got that zoomed way out and that's one of the benefits of the whisker menu is you've got a lot of control over this menu panel so this is about the default size and let me back up to and say everything you see here is default I've in, uh, increased the um, the font size just for recording purposes but this is the default wallpaper theme and everything that you see as you first launch in uh, I was happy to see the whisker menu in place because you don't always get the whisker menu in uh, other distros with XFCE. Um, you know, you get more of a standard, straightforward drop down menu. And um, so the whisker menu, for those of you again who are not familiar, maybe this is the first time you've seen it, uh, I like that you can go in and configure things. So, for example, your category list here to access all of your applications is on the right. Now, for, for me, my muscle memory, I like having that on the left. Well, you can go in and change that. It's very simple. You right-click on the icon and go to Properties. And under Behavior, you'll choose Position Categories next to the panel. Now, you've got other options here. Under Appearance, you could go in and show the application description. So if we toggled that on, you're going to get a description of what the application is or does. Now that's great if you're a new Linux user because you may not be familiar with all the various applications. So, you know, that's just one of those small details that um, as you start digging into this stuff really shows, you know, the benefit of using, say, you know, this desktop environment over another. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that out and you'll be able to see the changes. So now you see um, the app the application categories are on the left and you'll see here now here's a reason why it's nice to be able to go in and expand the panel size you have got this long description here so you know I may not keep it this way but I can if I choose I mean that's the great thing about Linux is you've got this choice and here in this desktop environment you've got this choice to make this panel whatever size you want and to me that's just what's so cool one of the many many cool things about Linux so uh, you know now you could go in and if you're new again you could see that, that this application is to add and remove or update software on this uh, computer. So while we're here uh, let's just go ahead and jump in and look at a, a list of the various software uh, pre-installed. 
So under accessories, you're going to see a lot of the usual. You're going to have an archive manager for you know zipping files, that kind of thing. Calculator, uh, catfish file search, and I haven't used this. Uh, I've seen it, but I haven't used it really, uh, you know, to any extent. But it's fast, so I'm going to do doc, for example, and you see how quickly uh, documents launch there. Something else I want to point out. Here's another thing I appreciate about the XFCE uh, environment. You can click and drag and scale this window to whatever size suits you. And I love that. And I've noticed, you know, one of the things with uh, GNOME is there are windows that whatever size they open to, that's the size you get. You, you don't have the ability to quickly go in and click and drag and scale that window to, to another size. And then you find yourself scrolling. And I know it's easy to scroll with a mouse wheel. Don't, don't get me wrong there. But I, again, I like having this choice. Um, you know, maybe I want to I don't need this here and I want to keep this window open and I want to scale this down while I have other windows open and place it over here. So for me it makes sense that you know you have the ability to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and just pop through some of the applications. I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on all of the applications. I just want to give you a quick overview. Uh, you've got a notepad here. Uh, the other thing that stood out that I like to see is you have onboard keyboard. And for me, this is nice. I've got a hybrid system that I have this installed on. So to have this on-screen keyboard pre-installed, it's just one less step that I have to make. And it's, it's nice to see that in place. So we'll go ahead and uh, close that out. And you'll notice that the icon is up here uh, in place on the panel now so uh, for quick access. All right, so we'll keep moving here. We'll go under education. You're just going to see Libre Math there. Uh, a couple of games, Minds and uh, Sudoku uh, uh, pre-installed. Uh, under graphics, I was surprised not to see GIMP, but you do see Ristretto Image Viewer, clean, simple uh, image viewer, you know, that uh, does the job while maintaining, you know, speed and everything. Doesn't take long at all to uh, open. And let's see here. Uh, looks like my system is running on battery power. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, graphics again. So you had Simple Scan and Document Viewer. Um, you know, this isn't overly um, you know, bogged down with tons of software pre installed, which I'm fine with. Uh, you've got Firefox web browser pre installed. And let me just real quick plug in here. I don't want to lose this video during the process. This thing has dual batteries, but still, don't want to take any chances. Um, so, Thunderbird Mail, Transmission, and Firefox by default. Uh, here was one that surprised me under multimedia. Uh, VLC is not pre installed, or at least you know in the version that is you know uh, released less than 24 hours before the official release uh, but you do have parole media player and I'm gonna dig into parole media player uh, because I really like it again it, it doesn't launch full screen it allows you to scale the window out to whatever size works for you and uh, you know it's just nice clean interface and seems to be very fast and um, I wanna dig into that a little more and see codec wise what all is in place and everything because it's it's really nice uh, all right we'll keep moving here office you've got uh, LibreOffice and then settings your full list of settings there um, you know everything from appearance additional drivers you know everything you're gonna need time and date settings uh, additional workspaces uh, panel switch things like that to go in and customize your panel and I've got other videos where I cover a lot of details on the configuration of XFCE, you know, settings and things like that. I'm not really going to get into that. Just wanted to give you a quick look at uh, at 1610 Yakety Yak. Uh, under System, you've got Task Manager, and then I'm not familiar with this particular application. A front end to connect to remote file systems. Let's check that out. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything with it, but uh, Gigolo. Gigolo? Gigolo, maybe? Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, I'm just a gigolo. Um, all right, enough of that. So, you know, let's go in and we'll do, actually, I'll go into a panel setting here. So if you go into panel, panel preferences, you'll notice a red line now around the panel. That means you're in edit mode. So that allows you to go in and do things like, um, adjust the panel size and this is kind of crazy in size but I just want to illustrate the control that you have uh, so we'll take that back down to a more normal usable size but a lot of these settings uh, 
are very beneficial in that, you know, if you're vision impaired, then you can go in and scale these things up to a size that would allow to allow you, you to use your OS, you know, in a, in a much easier way, you know, that would work with with your uh, vision imp impairment, for example. So, you know, it's beyond just looks; it's uh, usability. So, you know, right-click menu, great having that with applications here uh, readily available. Uh, quick desktop settings. You've got a fairly nice list of wallpapers uh, here to choose from. Quality, not a huge list of wallpapers, but look to be quality wallpapers. We'll go ahead and change one over. You know, fun things like if you want to change your background and have that uh, rotate in and out every 10 minutes in random order, things like that. So, I mean, it's really, um, you know, people talk about it being light, and it is, it, but it's also extremely configurable. So again, I'm going to sum it up here, uh, not spend a whole lot more time digging through this. I'm going to sum it up, sum it up by saying, maybe you've been on Unity, and you know, the default desktop under Ubuntu, and you're looking for something different. Um, if you are and you, you like a light interface that still gives you lots of options and features, then I would certainly say give this a try. You know, you're going to have a stable base. Uh, you know, it's going to be fast. It's going to run well on uh, weaker systems. And, um, you know, I think you'd have some fun in the process going in and tweaking things out and getting things set up. So, hope this helps and we will check you later. And if you've got questions, um, you know, about anything that I haven't covered, uh, you know, a particular setting or, or something like that, go ahead and message me in the, uh, you know, go ahead and send me a message under the video and I'll do my best to get back to you. I can't always do that because I have a day job and, and a work schedule that I, you know, have to keep things rolling. But I'll do my best and I'll try to keep this system in place here, you know, for a couple of days and uh, to be able to answer any questions or anything like that. All right, thanks for watching and we will check you later.